Hi there, and welcome to another episode of MIA Podcast, where we explore this topic of will Australian manufacturing ever return to the glory days of the 60s? So welcome back for our regular listeners. Today, we have a very exciting uh, guest, Christina, who I'll introduce in just a second. Uh, so I know a lot of our listeners have been wanting to get some information around um, R&D and you know, the whole grants, all those sort of topics. So uh, Christina from Tech Abstract, her business is, uh, uh, they're experts in the whole R&D process and everything about it. So welcome, Christina. Good Lovely morning. To have you on board. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Great to be here and great to be able to share information about the Australian R&D Tax Incentive Program with you all this morning. Fantastic. And I know I'm glad you can say that quickly because I'm still struggling to say that whole phrase. So that's why I brought in an expert today. So firstly, Christina, um, if you want to give a little bit of information about Tech Abstract, who they are, how they started, that would be a good way to start, I think. Awesome. Thanks, John. Okay. So um, Tech Abstract, we're an Australian advisory firm and we help Australian companies access the Federal Government Research and Development Tax Incentive Program. Now, the R&D program was set up back in 1986. Um, we're quite fortunate. The way we came about about 11 years ago is our founder, who's an engineer, comes from a mechanical engineering background. He was actually pulled into Oz Industry and became an auditor for Oz Industry, um, auditing companies that had um, applied for R&D. And he quickly realised that the applications were so poorly done that he could help these entrepreneurs and Australian companies write better applications sitting on the other side of the table. And that's how he set up his business sort of 11 years ago. And here we are today. Fantastic. And I think, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, as I said, a big calling for our, a lot of our listeners or for, for a lot of them, it's, it's a bit of a mystery. How's it all work? How do we get started? Um, you know, they know there's money out there to help them grow. Um, how does it all work? So, um, I think, do you want to just give like a, a little bit of a brief of just firstly what's out there and secondly, what's what type of businesses might be able to go for those sort of those, those incentives? All right. So let's just talk about the um, the R&D tax incentive program. So it was, set, it was set up back in 1986. So it's been around for a long time. And the whole aim of the program was the Australian government was encouraging Australian companies to do and gain new knowledge in the Australian economy. So gain new knowledge is gonna benefit Australian businesses. So, and what they termed that was, okay, R&D activity. Now, when it was set up, it's set up and it's ministered by two government bodies, Oz Industry that looks at the application in terms of the R&D activity that you're conducting, and then the ATO in terms of how it relates to your company income tax return, so the whole the way the program is set up is if you're doing legitimate R&D activity in the Australian economy, you're entitled to a tax offset of up to 43.5%. So let's say I'm a manufacturing company and last year I did some R&D and I've spent $100,000, I could get back $43,500 as a tax offset. And that's going to come to me either as a tax credit or as a tax refund, depending if my company's trading at a profit loss or break even. The key thing about the program is you have to be doing R&D. Now, when we talk R&D, John, a lot of people think, oh, does that mean I need to have a white lab coat, be in a lab with my, you know, Bunsen burner doing experiments? No, that's perception. The reality is this. The reality is that most companies are doing some type of R&D activity in their day-to-day -day business and they don't even realise particularly in manufacturing, because in manufacturing, most companies are always looking at process improvements, how do I gain efficiency? Those areas in there can have R&D activity that you can claim. And with the R&D activity, we can claim what we call direct, indirect costs, and also feedstock. So feedstock are um, items that I'm using in, in my everyday -to day business, but I can also use um, for R&D, so you can claim. So it's a huge advantage for Australian companies to have the ability to gain new knowledge and get money back for doing that. And can I just say, um, um, John, I'm gonna say this, the R&D program is an entitlement program, not a grant. So if you're doing legitimate R&D activity, you're entitled to a tax offset of up to 43 and a half percent. 
that is fantastic and i think fantastic news for a lot, a lot of our viewers uh because um yeah I, I like this whole concept of uh they're probably doing activities already that they don't even realize they um have entitlements too so do you have any like some specific examples of what uh what might be out there that someone might be missing out on? Look, when it comes to, um, so we work with companies in lots of different industries. Obviously, manufacturing is a big area, also agriculture. And manufacturing, it's not just manufacturing in terms of whether a sheet work, um, manufacturing products, but also food food manufacturing, because you've got, you've got factories that you're dealing with, you're trying to get efficiencies, also, when it comes to food manufacturing, a lot of the times you're working on new recipe creation. So let's say I'm a gluten-free baker. I, I've created these amazing gluten-free bread rolls. They look like sourdough, they taste amazing, but it's taken me a lot of work to come up with that recipe. The, that's R&D. Getting that right, that stuff that you can claim. Um, and when, particularly when you're in food and beverage and you're looking at expanding your product offerings and you're looking at new products, you've got to test recipes out. That involves R&D. Now, on the other hand, we've got um, people in manufacturing that, you know, do um, lots of form work, pipe work, they're, and they're always trying to solve a problem for their client. Now, sometimes you're having a client comes to you with a particular problem, you're like, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. Let me step back and think, that's where R&D comes in. You have to try different things and say, okay, that didn't work. Now, for people like myself, when a client tells me they've done um, a project and it's failed, that's music to my ears because that really shows that there's a knowledge gap, right? For the client, it's extremely d distressing, but it means that, look, you are searching for knowledge, so there really is a legitimate um opportunity for us to submit an R&D tax incentive application for you. The key thing is with the program, you have to submit it within the relevant financial year. So you can't, you cannot go back and do retrospective claims. So for example, at the moment, um, fiscal year 21 has just been submitted. And on the 1st of July, 2022, fiscal 22 applications open. And then you have till the 30th of April, 2023, to submit your fiscal 22 R&D activities, yeah. right? The key thing and the way the program is designed is because you're gaining new knowledge, you have to be conducting that knowledge in an experimentation manner. So it's like you have to start with, okay, I've got it, I've got, I'm trying to find what the new knowledge is. What's the hypothesis? What, I'm, what am I testing? Then I do my experimentation. Then what are the results and what have I learned? That's how the R&D program has to be written. And that's why you work with companies like ourselves, Tech Abstract, because we will work with you to pull the information that we need to write the application. And our um, probably point of difference is because our engineers are the ones that write the applications, our engineers really understand what our clients are doing. They've got a, a, a because they come from a science background, it makes it much easier when we sit with our clients and they're saying this and the engineer's saying, oh, I understand that, this is that problem, this problem. Okay, we can write that up for you. But we're also very upfront. The leg there is a legislation. I think the program's um, built around eight to nine pieces of legislation. So long as you stay within the legislation, R&D activity is awesome. So what we really work with our clients is to give them an understanding of what they're doing. Does it meet the legislation? Yes. And this is the process that we work with them because you've also got to be able to keep records of what you're doing. Mm. And what we're good at is, is setting up processes for our clients to say, okay, when you're doing R&D, this is how you record it. So that if you ever get audited, you've got proof of exactly what you did and it's date and time stamped. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes businesses aren't great at keeping records. That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, I'd imagine if, you know, in, in say that, that, that Baker scenario, mm -hmm. they're probably just going out the back there and just experimenting without even realising it's called experimenting. That's probably just what they naturally do. Yeah. Look, it's quite interesting. Um, uh, a couple of months ago, we went out to, to see a client and, and they make, they're in the confectionery, confectionery space, and they had come up with a, a new gummy bear um, using um, fibre in the gummy bear. Um, but what they didn't realise is when... The, in doing that process, 
when the molds went to flip, all the gummy bears were stuck in the molds, thousands of gummy bears just stuck because um, fiber has a sticking property, didn't let the gummy bears fall out. And so for them, it was a massive failure. For us, it was like, whoa, this is great. Yes. Um, but it really shows that they had a knowledge gap in terms of, you know, creating a gummy bear with a fibre. But how do you do that and not make it stick to the mould? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, does it have to be something new? Look, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be something new. The key thing is the way I describe it is when you hit that brick wall moment in your company, you've got a problem, you hit the brick wall, and you're trying to think, how do I get through this wall? Let me step back and let me try this, let me try that to see if I can solve that getting through the brick wall moment. So look, it, it doesn't have to be new. We've got um, a client in Perth, They're in, they are in agriculture and they supply timber to the Australian timber mills. Yep. Now, one of the biggest issues we have in Australia is lack of timber. Yes. You can't keep up with demand. Yep. So where the R&D comes in for them is they take their tree seedlings, the fertilizers, um, and they try and see if they can speed up at the rate at which the tree seedlings grow by doing by treating the tree seedlings differently in terms of the process. So that part of their business is R and D. And remember, I mentioned you could use feedstock. So the the tree seedlings, the fertilizer, that's part of their every day to day business. But they're also using that for R and D, so they can claim some of that as their R and D cost expenses. That's fantastic. And um, I, I would hazard a guess to say some of that ends up being their IP, which they can export overseas. Absolutely. Look, some some of our clients have um, created amazing things and are trademarked and have IP. Some other clients are just really have got processes, particularly in manufacturing, where they just run into roadblocks when they're trying to produce something for a client. and. The issue is also producing at a, um, in terms of being efficient and cost effective, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, which means you, you have to try different things um, within your business. So, you know, some of those elements we can help and say, yeah, look, that is R and D. We can sort of claim that back. Um, but it, look, we work. As I said, look, the clients. Probably what I love most about what we do is because our clients are so varied. We work with clients in lots of different industries. So you learn about lots of the different things, yeah. right? You sort of become an expert. Um, and you've got some people that are very, very clever in what you're doing um, and other people that are just really smart operators. Yeah. Yeah. So look, uh, I think um, one, of the, one of the things that we always used to hear was that, you know, that, uh, which you pointed out already, but this whole thing of like, oh, we get money back for, for mm -hmm. R&D, but it's important to point out it is the, the tax benefit, not like the government's just going to give you. Yeah, it's not back. correct. It's not, look, it's, it's a tax offset of 43.5%. Um, so if your turnover is under 20 million, you get back 43.5%. If your turnover is over 50, I think you get back. 38 and a half percent but it's still a big it's still a huge amount of money that makes a big difference and i think right. what we find and what our clients say for them what that money allows them to do is allows them to keep doing r d activities so it allows them to keep innovating and gaining new knowledge that not only benefits their business but benefits the overall australian economy and you know whether it's in like we also have a lot of clients that are in the software space but with software development, it has to be done for external purposes, not for internal. Yep. And it's not just about writing a new program. We really sort of have to drill down at an algorithm level to understand where the roadblocks are. But we're quite fortunate because we've got an R&D um, specialist that comes from software engineering. He was head of Canon for about 30 years in Australia, R&D department. So he's really good with our software clients to, to pick out that's got R and D. That doesn't. We can't talk about that. That's good to know. So we we do a lot of um, we do a lot of integration work. Where essentially mm. where we jump into a business and um, they're like, oh, we want to get this system to talk to that system. Mm. Uh, this you know, there was a big national solar company we helped roll mm. out. They uh, they took them three years to, to try and roll out this mm. integration, but we jumped in and managed to do it within like three or four mm. months. But I would guess. 
they oh who knows who knows whether that would yeah. sit with anyone. look yeah. the key thing is um the other thing is that the way we work is um so we'll write up the application for our clients so we sit with them that we collect the data we write the application we submit it to Oz industry we also prepare the r d tax incentive schedule so we're registered tax agents to do that but we work with our clients either internal or external accountants because the r d schedule has to be attached to the company income tax return right, right. but there is look there is a real benefit if there's money to be had and it can help your business so that you can innovate and try different things. It's a great program to be involved in. Yeah, I love it. I love this. Um, because something we were talking about before we hit the record button was, I think, the current state of Australian manufacturing, mm -hmm. which we uh, we can all agree there's huge mm -hmm. opportunities at the moment off the back yeah. of COVID and just the current um, geopolitical environment mm -hmm. where shipping costs are, are going up, um, you know, we're talking about the uh, even on certain trade routes, there's the risk of piracy. So the cost of insurance is going up to, to ship goods. So there's a real, real opportunity for Australian manufacturing to be able to fill in gaps, to be able to specialise. And uh, it's exciting to hear that you know, the, the government is out there to support us as well. Look, and John, you, you raise a valid point because one of uh, some of our clients, particularly in the manufacturing field, are saying that they're getting a lot more contracts because the cost of um, getting stock from overseas is extremely expensive. But it's not only the cost, it's the lead time. Yeah. You're having to wait to, to get the products. So, you know, some of them are really taking advantage of the current climate and they're winning contracts that traditionally they had lost to overseas suppliers. Yes. Yeah, it's a really, really, really interesting time. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things we're finding off the back of even just this podcast is that each one of our guests is just opening up such a critical uh, component of, 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 of the opportunity that I think a lot of us were never aware of. Yeah. Um, and this is just another piece of that big jigsaw puzzle. So uh, on that note, um, do you want to just, you said you, you do work with a fair few manufacturing clients. What would you say is the current state of play in Australian manufacturing, given that we've just had a new government, which probably don't know much about, mm -hmm. but um, what would you say is the general state of play? Look, from our point of view, in terms of, you know, working with Oz Industry and the ATO and the R&D program, I think the government has traditionally always been um, really supportive of the R&D program. If you think it's survived, it's been around since 1986. I think we've survived nine or ten different prime ministers yeah. since then. <laughs> lost count. Yeah. Um, it months. was originally set up by the Hawke and so the Labor government, Hawke, King Keating originally set up the program. So Labor has tend to has traditionally been quite supportive of Australian manufacturing and what we're doing and gaining new knowledge. If I talk to our manufacturing clients, most of them seem to be quite optimistic. The key thing is what they're all looking at is how do I do what I do and how do I become more efficient and how do I really reduce my costs? So efficiency process improvements are really important and those elements are part of R&D. So when you're doing that type of stuff, it's always worthwhile speaking. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to, for you guys to pick up the a phone and have a conversation with anyone. We're really upfront. If we think we can help, I'll tell you that there's R&D. If there isn't, I will also say, I'm sorry, you're not doing any R&D activity. But we work on a success fee, so there's no cost to the client having a conversation with us. Worst case, you've lost 30 minutes of your time. Best case is potentially I can give you a tax offset of 43.5%. Yeah, and, and as always, we'll have uh, we'll have your uh, details in the show notes as well. And when we post them on social media, we'll have all the links to uh, Tech Abstract as well. So be able to get directly in contact. Um, so I, I look, I, a lot of the media at the moment is saying there's doom and gloom in the Australian economy and blah, 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 blah. Look, um, I know, I shouldn't say blah, blah, that's a bit rude. But... Uh, <laughs> But um, you know, probably it does depend on perspective, um, and it just seems, uh, you know, for the manufacturing industry, it probably seems a little bit, a little bit contradictory to what we're seeing, uh, where there are new opportunities, there's new markets opening up. Um, there's there's obviously certain parts of the economy that are just that are in trouble, but I, from what we can see, manufacturing seems to be holding up, and traditionally 
Manufacturing was probably one of the first sectors that was an early detector of a um, of a of a reset or you know economic slowdown mm -hmm. at least. Um, what's what's your take? What are you seeing? Look, I can just speak from like working with our clients. I think it all comes down to how um, how your business is set up and how you're running your business. I think smart operators in manufacturing will do well out of this period. Mm -hmm. But it's just like any any other any business. If you're running a smart, sharp shop, you're going to do well. You've got to be focusing on the on the right things that are going to give you um, the return on investment that you need to be looking at. Like our clients in manufacturing, particularly in the food space, are doing extremely well. And their biggest issue is they just can't keep up with the demand. Yeah. Right? So, you know, like getting equipment, particularly... Um, getting equipment, which a lot of the um, manufacturing equipment for food comes out of places like Italy, there's a six to eight month lead time yep. in getting these machines. So then they're turning to some Australian um, suppliers saying, well, can you build this? Can you actually build this, what I need? Because you can't, they can't process, they can't keep up with demand because they need the machines to process, reduce the labor costs and give them a, increase their output. So look, I think it's, interesting exciting times but i think it's really important that as a business you really look at what you're doing and making sure that your system is set up and that you've got efficiencies and your processes are correct yeah. for what you're doing um but with our clients most of our clients are really excited yeah that's good i mean we've got this whole generation four of, of manufacturing coming out now which is as you said more efficient there's, yeah. there's more of a technology layer yeah uh, there's more AI layers, so we can get you know computers to find out efficiencies yeah. and inefficiencies. That's those sort of layers as well. And so uh, what what we're seeing is those sort of businesses, the yeah. smarter businesses, are the ones that are really taking a big yeah. leap forward. Um, you know that that whole concept of just labour costs is just yeah. is shrinking uh, for a lot of businesses. And so uh, you know there's that whole tech layer coming in yeah. as well. And, you know, I guess if we talk about that whole thing back in the day, the whole concept of shrinking, you know, a shrinking labor force was, was, was scary in terms of, say, manufacturing. But uh, I think you know, if you can get your hands onto the, the more technical side of, of how to run a manufacturing business or how to support, you know, there's definitely some big opportunities there as well. Um, it was interesting what you were saying about that whole food manufacturing. One of one of our clients is Metal Print, so they import uh, a lot of equipment for uh, you know fruit and whatnot, sorting and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I was having a chat to Bernard. If you're listening, hi Bernard. Uh, Bernard, I should say not Bernard. Uh, but anyway. uh, so and he was saying the same thing. Like for you know, there's a lot of a lot of businesses wanting to set up in you know, say Shepparton and those sort of regions, Matt and all that, and um, they are struggling to get equipment. Yeah. And um, I think it's got, there's going to be a little bit of lead time before Australians can produce those of that, that equipment locally. But there's definitely an opportunity, whether it be a part of the equipment or yeah. what it might be. Yeah, we've got we've, one of our clients is sort of in industrial automation and they help a lot of their most of their customers are people in manufacturing where they're creating an automating process for them, whether it's mm. um, adding a robotic arm to a particular line. So instead of having people packing the robot, the robot arm is actually packing so yeah. they can pack much more efficiently. So, um, and it's when, when I go out to um, their premises out of Preston, it's in, it's out, blows your mind what they're doing in terms of, you know, how they can automate stuff and how they just come up with the technology, like, you know, creating these little robot arms that picks things up. I'm like, how do you even do that? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an engineer. As you can I, was watching, I, had to, I had to laugh as well. I was watching uh, one, of the, one of the thousands of Terminator movies on, uh, on Netflix yesterday, just uh, yeah, that whole thing, yeah. fear of robots. But, uh, you know, these, they're not particularly, I think they're particularly smart, those robots. Yeah. They are, but they're not. Uh, and they usually bolted down to something. Mm -hmm. um, so, look, uh, um, I think uh, what we normally do at this point is, is there anything, uh, any advice you would give to our manufacturing clients and our listeners, whether it be on the R&D side or the uh, just running the business side that you wanted to give? 
just to do our listeners now, this is a sort of a broad piece of advice. I look, I will say one thing according to Oz Industry, so this isn't my say, this is Oz Industry 70% of Australian manufacturing companies are doing RD in their everyday to day activity and they're not even realizing they're doing it. So I think if you're in manufacturing, you're just not sure, just reach out. You don't have to speak to me, you can speak to someone else, but get advice. If you're doing R&D, you're missing a huge opportunity um, because it can really benefit your business. To get an R&D tax offset of 43.5% is huge. And remember, you, you can either, you could be trading at a profit loss or break even. That doesn't matter. It will just be, the tax offset will be delivered to you differently um, in those scenarios. But it's a huge advantage because it really provides additional cash for you to keep innovating and improving your business, which is what it's all about. We're all looking for growth. Um, and to gain new knowledge. So, and, you know, manufacturing, I guarantee you guys are doing R&D, you may not even know it. So reach out to either someone like myself or other R&D consultants out there. I love it. And uh, I guess with a, with a lot of businesses, um, if they have some sort of record keeping, it's obviously gonna be beneficial as well. What about, what if there are businesses out there that maybe didn't record keep as that? Yeah. Look, and let's be honest, most, being honest, most small to medium sized Australian companies aren't great at keeping records. But what, we, what we're what really good at is we will work with you to help you set up processes to make that record keeping so much easier. Because once we're involved with a client, it's, it's about helping you set up processes. So we've got templates that we use for our clients, or we can use your existing systems to help you record when you're doing R&D activity. And then we also meet with our clients on a regular basis so that we don't wait 18 months to sit with you and say, John, what, what were you doing 18 months ago? Because you can't remember. So we, you know, depending on the size of our clients, we meet with them monthly, bi-monthly or quarterly. So we capture their R&D activity as they're doing it. So it makes the whole process so much easier. The whole idea is we don't want to make it hard for you. We, It's about making it easier for you, but taking advantage of a program that's there that you can tap into. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, so look, as I, as I said, uh, we'll, we'll have all the, uh, the contact details in the show notes as well. Um, one thing, one question we normally ask before we, we wrap up is just addressing that initial question, which is, will Australian manufacturing ever return to the glory days of the 60s? What's your opinion? I'm not sure we're going to get to the 60s, but I think <laughs> there's definitely room for Australian manufacturing to, to keep going. There's a lot of companies out there doing some awesome stuff um, and taking advantage of the R&D program is a great way to keep that industry alive. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And as we keep saying in, in all of our episodes, there's there's huge opportunities out there for Australian manufacturing. I mean, the, the government kicked off the um, uh, manuf Modern Manufacturing Initiative, it was 2020 from memory, uh, which, uh, if you haven't even looked at that, uh, we, we explore that obviously in this podcast as well. And um, always, I'm always sending out snippets on on LinkedIn, but it's it's worth a read because uh, if you if you haven't really looked at it, uh, the government's actually structured it so you can actually look into each individual sector sector and what's what's out there for your sector, and um, you'll be able to find uh, dig deeper to see what is there, what's happening. What, what what businesses are currently uh, getting success from it and also yeah, what what other incentives and, and other um, uh, policies are, are being driven to help grow manufacturing because I think there's this broad, uh, I think it's in our DNA still that manufacturing is part of Australia, it's always has been, it always will be. Uh, we Typically we're really good at it, uh, we're, we're great at, at pushing out high quality um, really, really great with our, I think our, our, our thought leadership mm -hmm. as well. So let's let's turn that thought leadership into something that is beneficial uh, financially for a business and is going to help the economy grow as a whole. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. So any final words, Christine? Look, it's Say been not. awesome. It's all right. It's been awesome. It's been awesome, John. John, the key thing that I probably want to leave you all with is there, if you think you're doing R&D, reach out to either myself or another R&D tax consultant, because please take advantage of the pro program. It's there to encourage Australian companies to keep gaining new knowledge that will benefit the Australian economy. 
Thank you. And um, I'll say thank you again, Chris. I know that's fantastic because, as I said, uh, you know, our viewers have been screaming for this information. So you're obviously an absolute wealth of knowledge. And I would say if even you're unsure, please, please reach out. Uh, and um, thank you again to our listeners. This is a wrap up for, for this month's MIA podcast. Uh, we'll see you in our next podcast where uh, we do have a, a pretty exciting uh, guest coming as well. We'll have that in the show notes as well. But I'll see you in our next podcast. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Bye. That is a wrap. Thank you.